I only want to, at the very outset, remember the founder of this organization as we celebrate its golden jubilee today in this beautiful hall attended by all of you with the assembly which is full of those who have served, who are continuing to serve this organization. And I do remember on this occasion our great founder, Honorable Desamanya, I will say attorney at law, Bakir Bangsa, because he was not speaker at that time when he founded this organization. Later he became a very distinguished speaker of parliament, respected by all, and he served the country and the community with great distinction. We have with us today, going on the same similar footpath, but maybe I'm sure he will rise even above that, his son, Honorable Imtiaz Bakir Maka, Member of Parliament, a past president, I believe, of the related organization of the Muslim League Youth. So let me congratulate all of you who have gathered here to celebrate the golden jubilee of this unique organization, All Silod Union of Muslim League Youth Fronts. And also the annual meeting of the organization that is taking place today. Having said that, I want to straight away draw your kind attention to the constitution of this organization. One of it says, provide a forum for discussion on all matters of public interest. Very unusually for any organization, we saw today a wonderful opportunity being given to all those who have come from far away to speak for a few minutes at least, reflecting on the day-to-day -day problems that they are having. But there is also another important objective of the union, as I find it in the act of incorporation, that was incorporated through parliament 25 years ago. In that, it is stated, promote intercommunal amity. Now, that is a very challenging task, promoting intercommunal amity. It looks such an easy objective, but recent events have shown that it is very challenging. I would even say, more challenging than some of the issues like drug menace that we have faced in this country. I'm going to just touch very, very superficially, I'm not going to go into any details, to some matters relating to this. Because if the objective of our organization is to foster intercommunal amity, friendship, harmony, if there is any threat coming to that from any quarter, then we have to be alert because this country cannot afford, this country cannot afford to have this enmity, hatred, revenge and confrontation that we have seen for over 100 years in this country. Once again, we may blame the British for dividing and ruling us, but we have to blame ourselves for some time and more often than not hanging on to these divisions. Let us think as far as possible, as we saw in today's program, to think in terms of Sri Lankans. They are African, of course. We need to protect our 
belief, our culture, our traditions. Subject to that, what I would like to mention very briefly now is, you all know that we are a country in serious economic dire straits. People are having problems, having three meals a day. People are having problems in living in this country. That is why large number of people are leaving. And we appreciate that the leader, the national president, my dear friend, Lukmans, for declaring that we will not leave this country. We will continue to serve those who remain in this country. Now, if we are to solve this economic problem, we cannot ever succeed without national unity, friendship, ability. That is a very key factor in overcoming the economic challenge. As I said, this is an issue that has been exploited from time to time by many, particularly from amongst political leaders with all respect to those who are here. You know whom I am referring to. If you don't overcome this, at least from now onwards, that means there is a need for a national statesman that this country could have and could be led by. Without having to re have recourse to communal advantages, communal references, you know very well that today we have been closely monitored by the UNHRC, United Nations Human Rights Council. On the question of violation of fundamental rights and issues related to creating communal disarmament have come under their focus. Whether we like it or not, this country should be in a better position than any other foreign organization to respond to the accusations. How do we do that? How far have we gone down to this situation where we have lost our economic job? I'll just give one passing example. 30 years war. We have had 30 year war. Sometimes when you think of it, Sri Lanka, 30 year war. Is it believable? But we have gone through it. And during this 30 year war, all our wealth, all our resources went from our country to those who are exporting arms, which includes the United States, Israel, Britain, France, and Russia as a primary party. There are many others who are exporters of For them, war is a more important business than drugs. You have much more money and there are the international media which is going along. I'm not referring to the entire media, sections of it. And then we see, as Justice C.G. Veeramantri once said, the lobby of peace is so weak. The lobby of warmongers is very powerful. If we are to overcome one of the weapons that are being encouraged, particularly I am accusing a country which has deprived Palestine of its state, which has deprived Palestine of what was promised to them in 1947 when Britain partitioned that land without the consent of the Palestinians, without asking not Palestinians here means not only Muslims, but included Christians and Jews. They were never asked. 
it was imposed by the british by partition even that purpose partition is being deprived of during the last 75 years in 1967 you know the six day war they used to grab the rest of the country even from that partition smaller area they grabbed as much as possible and they are in today in unlawful occupation they are an occupying force palestine is rightly fighting for its liberation if for this country if any other country invades we all have a duty to fight for our liberation nobody in the world no one in the world can ever dare to call them terrorists but we here other than the un western countries have labeled this and taking too much of your time but i want to just mention we have had in the in geneva a document that i been presented some aspects of it a very limited aspect of which was shown on channel 4 tv that was on the 5th of last month this is not old history this is current affairs 5th of september on the 20th of september a statement was circulated attributed to hansir azad maulana i am only referring to a very important aspect of what he had said that this country officials politicians have used certain organizations he has named the organization and i will name that tamil makkal vidut vidudale political tmvp to inside this moment the racial conflict so that someone can come to power at the last presidential election and playing with responsibility it is sufficient enough material in those 20 pages and those are very serious allegations no one can just write it off and say this is not and these are all unsubstantiated that's not the job of azad maulana not ali zahid maulana my honorable friend empty to prove proof is in the investigation investigation is the responsibility of our government not leave it to someone else there is also another video clip by a former senior dig mr ravi senorat that was also put out on the 18th of last month all very current affairs if you read that it's also running to large number of pages he has nothing to do with maulana but independently when you see that you find there is lot of material that requires investigation to clear the names of those who say i we have nothing to do with this this is all false yes if it is false you have a golden opportunity to prove it is false i would like to before concluding i don't want to take more of your time i have been given 15 minutes in fact i don't want to take 15 minutes with all respect to your uh, you know very valuable time that you all have there is also a very very interesting interview that have been given by a respected highly respected uh buddhist monk i thought he will be, he was invited to come here but unfortunately he is not here and therefore i don't want to quote what he had said other than to say that in a interview that he gave to the daily mirror on i believe june 
where he says that temples were told that they should set apart 15 minutes of their time for Islam and And he says this was done before the last election. Last what elections? Last presidential election. That one is worth reading, but if the respected Kalkande Amdiru was here, I would have read the whole thing. But it says very clearly how this appears to have been manipulated to serve some personal interest. Why I am saying this is, again there is another round that there is going to be another attack. They say, Seven places to be attacked. I am telling you that is utterly false. Why I am saying it is utterly false is the person who says one Sujit, he is in demand prison, a criminal himself. He says in his statement which is supposed to have been thrown out of a window that three of those suspects who are accused in the High Court trial at Bay and Colombo have been discussing about attacking seven other places. But I want to tell you, three months prior to this story coming out, this same Sujit had a clash with this, with this uh, one of these three people inside. Maybe discussion, maybe some incident. But that has been fortunately for us. Why I say fortunately for us? Because we have some material to show why it is due to personal enmity. There in that case, three months prior to he made this allegation, he was produced. Together with this alleged three suspects in the High Court trial at Bar, it's the Sunday attack case. They were producing tenderly of courts that there had been a clash between those two. So obviously we as lawyers always think that he has his own personal remedy to make this false allegation. He had a reason to make this false allegation. It's so easy to make. I can come up with so many other cases. Last week, the Honorable Attorney General was able to discharge and the court regular magistrate discharged seven people who were arrested, who were in demand for a long time, but who were released, but there was no evidence. The Honorable Attorney General discharged all of them. They came out last week. I'll just mention for your remembrance, one of those suspects, he was a parliament, he was in the parliamentary staff. Before they raided, they raided as if they were going to go and catch Prabhupada. That was the amount of huge publicity that was given. And that boy is in the throes of death. He will pass away very soon. Let me conclude. We should achieve. See that there is no confrontation ethnically or on religious. The Muslims of Sri Lanka have no objection whatsoever to Buddhism being given the primary place in this country as a constitution gives. We have absolutely, we will support all assistance to make sure that every Buddhist in this country becomes a good practicing Buddhist because that will be the best safeguard for, for all other religions in this country. A good Buddhist will be the best guarantee of our safety and security. So we will support that. But not racism, <laughs> not extremism, whether it's from our community or from any other community. I don't want to go into any more details. We need more opportunities. I'm glad that the Oslo Union of Muslim League Youth Front gave me these few minutes to put across some of my thoughts. I believe this not 
the best occasion, the golden jubilee celebrations of an organization. But your objective clearly gives me that opportunity and I did not hesitate to take it. I'm only wishing that what we saw, the elephants rampaging houses that were put up on the screen here. If you go to Gaza, you will see thousands of such houses demolished by human beings, by people who say that they suffered, suffered a holocaust. Instead of giving them some land in Germany or even in the United States, they have been given land here. But I must respect, the President has urged an immediate cessation of, 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 of fire to have a ceasefire. We welcome that. We also welcome the vote that was given at the uh, last UN General Assembly in favor of Palestine. While doing that, we also wish to mention that it is important that we should know who our friends are and who our enemies are. They are all posing off. In conclusion, the United States of America, I'm going to name that very clearly, aiding and abetting the destruction of human lives in Palestine will be under consideration. We are not going to keep quiet on this. We are considering what prevents us from initiating action in this country under extraterritorial jurisdiction, if that is possible, against Israel and the United States of America for this violation of human rights, violation of really genocide. There are some further action that the international community has to take, but the international community is blind to all this. They are part of it. And we are very sad about it. Having said that,